Our story today, our main story, a deadly and dreadful rampage by Israeli settlers through a Palestinian town Sunday night. Palestinian media said some 35 homes and 90 cars were torched by some 400 settlers that arrived in the village of 7,000 people overnight. Photos and video on social media showed large fires burning throughout Hawara and lighting up the sky. Palestinian medics said one man was killed and dozens of others were wounded during the violence in the Palestinian town and in other villages neighboring Nablus. The attack came after settler groups had called for demonstrations to avenge Palestinian shooting attack in Hawara earlier in the day in which two Israeli brothers in their 20s were killed. Their funeral will be held today at 2 p.m. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas condemned what he called the terrorist acts carried out by settlers under the protection of the occupied forces. We hold the Israeli government fully responsible, he added, claiming that the settlers had taken their cues from the positions of some ministers in this extreme right-wing Israeli government. Only six of the 400 settlers have been arrested overnight for their involvement in the attacks. President Herzog and Prime Minister Netanyahu strongly condemned the attacks by Jews overnight. The IDF and the security forces are currently in pursuit of the murderer. We will find him, capture him and deal with him. But even when the blood is boiling and the tempers are high, do not take the law into your own hands. I ask to let the IDF and the security forces do their job. I remind you that in the last few weeks they have eliminated dozens of terrorists and prevented dozens of terror attacks. Let the IDF complete the chase. Don't take the law into your own hands. Together we will defeat terrorism. We're now turning to Hawara where our correspondent Pia Steckelbach joins us. Uh, Pia, how is it looking this morning? What are you hearing from uh, residents in Hawara? Well, Ariel, you can definitely still see some remnants from yesterday night's rampage of those 400 Israeli settlers who not only raided here in the town of Hawara, but also in the surrounding villages. You could still see tear gas canisters shot by Israeli forces laying on the ground. And I'll step aside for you to see there is still, um, you can, of course, see those burnt buildings. We have seen that 40 buildings have been partially destroyed. 35 buildings have been completely destroyed by being torched. Also cars where we were close to the Main Street in Hawara earlier, we could still smell the burnt rubber from the tires. And you can see that this junction here specifically, the army is very present because the manhunt is still underway for the perpetrator of yesterday's uh, attack, the killing of the two Israeli brothers here and the settlers who were active here yesterday night, who were uh, responsible for the rampage. They were saying that this is a revenge attack for that killing of the two brothers. Now tonight, not far from away from here, from the town of Zata, a 37-year-old Palestinian was killed, Sahib Akhtash. And this area here, this street, that main street that is going through Hawa, that you can see right behind me, this is really a flashpoint because this is one of the very few areas in the West Bank where Palestinians and Israeli settlers directly meet. When uh, you continue straight away towards where I'm, what I'm facing right now, you'll reach the major Palestinian city of Nablus. And as you can see, surrounded, this, this uh, small town of Hawara, it has about 7,000 inhabitants only, but it is surrounded by settlements, as you can see them here on those hilltops. This is the settlement of uh, Itzal, and this is where those people that are responsible for that terrible rampage tonight uh, have been coming from. As you mentioned, Ariel estimated 400 people coming from those settlements tonight were here uh, and six were arrested. We have heard condemnations from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and also from the Israeli president. But you know, when you talk to people here on the ground, we had the chance to speak to a member of the municipality of Hawara. He was saying how surprised he actually was about the extent of tonight's rampage, that he hasn't seen anything like that before here in, here in Hawara, and that he also holds this very far right-wing Israeli government responsible, and he says they are uh, supporting these, as he mentioned, as he called them, racist attacks. Horrific uh, scenes there uh, overnight uh, from uh, Hawara. Thank you very much, uh, Pia. Of course, we'll be back with you soon. We stay with our coverage of this story. The settlers' attack on Hawara came hours after a regional security summit wrapped up in Aqaba in Jordan. Israelis and Palestinians met in an attempt to ease the growing tensions in the West Bank. The outcome from there, according to American reports, 
a freezing of Israeli building and settlements for the next four months. The IDF has deployed another battalion to the Nablus area in the West Bank in addition to the two that are already stationed there. The White House, EU and the UK have condemned the attacks by Jews overnight in Hawara. State Department spokesman Ned Price said in a statement, we condemn today's violence in the West Bank, including the terrorist attack that killed two Israelis and settler violence, which resulted in the killing of one Palestinian, injuries to over 100 others, and destruction of extensive property. We're now joined by Avi Milamid, founder and CEO of Inside the Middle East Intelligence Perspectives, a Middle East expert. Thank you very much for being with us. I'm wondering with the reports this morning, how come only six settlers were arrested? We're talking about more than 400. It took hours for the IDF to stop the violence. This is Area C in the West Bank, which means that it is controlled by the IDF. Where was the IDF and why are not more being arrested? I don't know exactly where was the IDF, but I can tell you that it's very clear that what we see uh, is very much uh, corrected to what's going on inside Israel. And I'm talking mostly about the fact that uh, today in the center of power of Israel, in the economy, in the constitution, in the homeland security, uh, we have ministers that are coming from the same mindset and the same modus operandi of uh, those uh, hooligans who committed last night this rampage in Hawara. That should be very clear. We have uh, ministers in the government and, and, and we have quotes yesterday on Twitter uh, by a uh, member of uh, parliament, uh, the chairman of the Homeland Security Committee who says Hawara should be put on fire. Uh, we have the, the uh, other elected officials in the West Bank that have been calling for similar activities. Um, so. What we're seeing, of course, is a reflection, as you say, of, of what's happening in the government. I do want to ask you about the uh, results of this summit that we saw yesterday in Aqaba, an attempt by Israel and the Palestinians mediated by the United States to lower the, the flames. Uh, what do we know about the outcome from there? We've heard an announcement from the United States that Israel has committed to stop construction in the West Bank for the uh, coming four months. Of course, ministers from the extreme right here in Israel say we're going to continue. Yes, and yet that's another reflection of the um, schizophrenic government or sort of government that we have today in Israel, where on the one hand the prime minister says A and his colleague ministers are saying B. Look, I want to say something in the context of, uh, of what happened yesterday. Once again, unfortunately, we see a situation when extremists on both sides are dictating the agenda of many, many people, good people, Israelis and Palestinians. I want to say something about the settlers. I'm not a settler myself. Most of the settlers are good people, honest people. You know, um, I have no doubt that many, many of the settlers totally resent uh, what uh, this hooligans uh, did last night. Uh, this is totally not the way. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think that the most important thing to understand here is the wide context. And I have no doubt in my mind. And by the way, the script on the wall, on the wall for a long period of time. I know this uh, very well. I met many of those people from this specific area of Hawara. And I'm talking about Sephora as well. And it's not surprising. Um, that was a hub and become a hub to a very radical and extreme a group of people that are trying to dictate their way today upon the state of Israel, upon the Palestinians as well. Uh, they are gaining momentum with the fact that, as I said before, their brothers to mindset are sitting in the, in the power centers of Israel today. But this is something of a very strong wake-up call for the majority of the Israelis, including with the settlers. Because we are looking today at a situation where the state of Israel is facing a very, very severe crisis. But I have no doubt in my mind, and I know that overwhelming majority of the Israelis are moderate, are pragmatic people. They are not radical. Yeah. And they are looking for practical solutions. We are in a phase that unfortunately for different circumstances, political one, we find ourselves basically where- Avi, please, Avi Melamed, please stay with us. I think the point has been made clear. Please stay with us. We're gonna take a short break. We'll be right back with more of that.